large water sphere. Here we are going to make a large sphere of water about the size of my head, 130 millimeters in diameter, and we are going to put a puff of air, 10 cc's in 100 milliseconds, as a delta function spike against the side of the sphere, and we're going to look at the resulting waves. And this is real-time oscillations. It's a delightful combination of surface waves and body-centered spherical waves, all running back and forth in this spherical oscillator. And this was another one of these jaw-dropping moments where we had no idea what was going to happen until we did the experiment, and then we're left scratching our heads trying to figure out why it behaves this way. Here's the same scene in slow motion. Look at that. A variety of surface waves running around, sort of like throwing a rock in a spherical pond, and the waves are forced to converge at the antipoid, and then a spurt goes out. Surface tension makes them collapse back in, and it sends a ripple of waves back the other way. Meanwhile, you have body-centered waves or inertial waves going through the center of this sphere, and everything you see then is a delightful superposition of all of these waves until viscous forces dampen everything. We will see this one more time in slow motion. Look at the drop of water spalled off from the initial impact. When we saw this, we couldn't help but think about computer simulations where some hapless planet gets whacked by an asteroid. 